A series of U.S. drone attacks have reportedly killed at least 16 people in Pakistan. Washington has kept up the airstrikes despite a recent declaration from the Pakistani parliament calling for their end. But with the U.S. government eyeing heavy investment in drone technology, Americans fear they could soon find themselves beneath a steel sky. RT's Gun H. Chikan reports. When a U.S. drone hit the house of this young man in Pakistan, he lost an eye, both legs and three family members. These people are demanding the CIA be held responsible for the deaths of their loved ones, but to no avail. With the use of drones comes a lack of accountability. Those are being operated by somebody at a command center in Langley, Virginia. They're watching it on, video, on a video screen. They're pressing the button. They're deciding who lives and who dies. And then they go off for a weekend where they have barbecues in their suburban Virginia and suburban Maryland homes. And who pays the price? The people who are the victims of the attack. Is there accountability? None whatsoever. Drones have become the symbol of America's undeclared wars. Wars that seem to have no state or legal boundaries. We've opened up a new realm of warfare a new realm of breaking, breaching international and domestic law. Used in Pakistan, Yemen and elsewhere, they have killed scores of civilians. The former chief counterinsurgency strategist for the U.S. State Department has estimated that drone attacks kill 50 non-targeted persons for each intended target. One of the things the United States kind of pretends is that we are morally superior. We are better able to judge what is good for other people. And therefore, we are entitled to inflict our judgment on them and that we presume they will be grateful to us for it. But that is not what happens, ever. And it's not what's happening in Yemen. It's not what's happening in Pakistan. They are furiously enraged with us. Washington is looking to increase the funding for drone development by seven times over the next 10 years. A large part of that will go towards unarmed surveillance drones. The U.S. has for years been using them in another of its undeclared wars against drug traffickers in Mexico. The Mexican government allows U.S. spy planes despite public discontent. There's a lot of concern that the use of these drones by the U.S. government has more to do with U.S. control over Mexican territory than actually going after the drug lords and winning the drug war. While issues of international law and sovereignty trigger little interest among Americans, the prospect of having surveillance drones spying all across the U.S. itself surely does. U.S. police agencies are asking for drones for domestic surveillance, raising alarm among those who think that could be the end of American freedoms. And especially when you, when you look at constitutional activities like free speech activities, they're going to be hovering over crowds that are merely maybe protesting the war or protesting some governmental act, and they'll be chilling free speech. The drones will be equipped with some sort of weapon, sound cannons, some people are saying lasers. They'll be able to punish citizens who are advocating against the government. They've already been used in some instances in the United States. And in 2007, protesters in Washington, D.C., DC noticed small objects floating overhead that looked like dragonflies. Turned out they were roboflies developed by the Pentagon as surveillance devices. As America continues developing this PlayStation mentality to killing an intelligence gathering in Pakistan, people live in fear that at any time they could become a target in someone's deadly video game. And many here in the U.S. fear that with the rapid expansion of spy drones over their own territory, they could one day wake up in an ultimate police state.